during the many 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 years but now again i'm, I'm really really happy uh, to really illustrate about this great collaboration uh, and very much happy to invite the unesco assistant director general for education uh, stefania Giannini, together uh, joining us in in this session so just a couple of words before i give the floor to her um, just to um, opening a little bit about her background. So she started in this current position in May 2018, becoming the top UN officer in, in this field. And in this pos position, she provides strategic vision and the leadership, of course, in coordinating and monitoring the implementation of the Education 2030 agenda, encompassing in Sustainable Development Goal number four, which we all know is the Education Goal. Uh, with an academic background in the humanities, um, she has served as a rector of the University for Foreigners of Perugia in 2004-2012, being one of the first and youngest women, uh, women to, to hold this position in Italy. As a senator of the Republic of Italy 2013 uh, until 2018, and Minister of Education, Universities and Research 2014-2016, she developed and implemented the structural reform of the Italian education system centered on social inclusion and cultural awareness. And with these words, I'm really, really happy to um, invite um, Madame Stefania Giannini to join us. So we are going to do that in that way that she's going to give the, her speech first and, and then kindly uh, also promise to take a couple of questions. So this is my alarm now for the audience to be ready uh, to put your questions to the room chat or, or um, uh, raising your hand as, as well, perhaps putting mostly in, in the chat box. That would be perhaps the easiest way for us to collect the, the questions uh, and, and then hopefully having a couple of times for the discussions as, as well. But I'm, I'm really happy now to hand over the floor to uh, Madame Giannini. Really, really happy to have you here. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody, wherever you are. And thank you to you, Mr. Chair and founder of Bridge 4.7, for inviting me in this uh, important uh, meeting. Uh, well, uh, it's really a pleasure uh, to join uh, you today. I know you already started uh, the morning on the right notes, uh, and uh, now the panel is, uh, is, is uh, on imagining a future with target 4.7, that is very much uh, close to UNESCO role in this pandemic uh, reaction uh, uh, to uh, response to the pandemic uh, in this recovery phase. Uh, uh, I thank you uh, also for your commitment uh, to putting this target into practice. Uh, uh, let me say, first of all, just to start, that I see really 4.7 as the, as the real engine uh, to transform in mindset uh, to chart a more sustainable path forward. And, uh, and let me first uh, focus a bit uh, on, the, on, the, on the context we are, uh, the state of the art, a short picture uh, about the, the, the impact of the pandemic and how we can take maybe this, uh, this crisis as an opportunity. Uh, well, the, pandemics, uh, the pandemic uh, uh, has only stepped up uh, the urgency uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, putting uh, uh, into practice uh, uh, a kind of uh, um, you know uh, values uh, oriented approach in education uh, and uh, it has uh, highlighted our interconnectedness uh, to a degree which uh, has never been so global nor so intimate affecting uh, uh, every family every community every country and it has unfortunately laid bare deep inequalities and fragilities. This is something that UNESCO uh, you know, started from the beginning, uh, uh, putting on the screen numbers uh, uh, related to school closures uh, to, to alert about. And uh, it has led uh, uh, to shadow pandemics. I should say like this, uh, uh, talking about gender-based violence, uh, intolerance, increasing intolerance, uh, hatred, and, and everything which is uh, around uh, uh, in very many countries uh, in the world. 
Well, education itself uh, was massively disrupted with 90% of the student population globally affected by school closures at the peak of the pandemic, April last year. Uh, on average, schools remain closed fully or partially uh, for 28 to 29 weeks, which is really a, a, a situation we never saw in history. And uh, we are uh, at a near existential turning point now. And this is very bad, why I think it's very much timely to organize a, a, a global debate on the, on the issue we are talking today. One, uh, one turning point uh, where the field is open uh, on and drive to shift of paradigm that we need, or you know, building back uh, better, uh, not, uh, not so clearly in case we don't take this opportunity. Let me mention uh, a posit the positive side of the coin, uh, just uh, uh, something which happened last week in Berlin. Uh, at UNESCO World Conference uh, on Education for Sustainable Development. Uh, close to 3,000 participants uh, in the virtual room, uh, including uh, 80 ministers uh, and uh, more than 12,000 of uh, uh, observers uh, uh, on the website. And this was about signing uh, a declaration, the Berlin Declaration, actually, uh, that has transformation at its core. Uh, we witness uh, a wide uh, uh, sharing of good practices from across the world, uh, driven by passionate individuals and committed organizations to education for sustainable development. Uh, it's telling that 18 member states of the European Union shared uh, uh, commitments to adapt their education systems so that learners uh, develop knowledge, awareness, uh, and action capacity to take action to transform our societies. And this comes down to learning for our planet, to acting as global citizens based on respect for human rights and democratic principles. And this is very much the core so to say, or poor 0.7 as the target, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, driving the, 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 the 2030 agenda and putting education as a cross-cutting uh, goal in the agenda as a whole. Um, sustainable development will not happen without education for global citizenship. To build back more equal, inclusive, and resilient education has to transform. And I, I would like to start with this keyword, transformation. The first uh, topic uh, I wish to, to focus on today and how we need to rethink education for a more sustainable future. The second point from my side is uh, how the vision of education embodied in Target 4.7 is instrumental to pursuing a whole of society approach essential for achieving the SDGs integrated agenda. That means not taking education as a, as a separate discussion between educators, between people who are in this, uh, uh, in this uh, field, but putting education at the core of sustainability and as a pillar for recovery better. And uh, uh, to conclude, I will evoke the how of our commitment to collective action, including plans and partnerships in place and urgently needed investments. So as a starting point, what do we understand by transformative education? It's a very popular uh, phrase now, but it's important to, to understand what we are, what we are talking about. Uh, UNESCO believes in the power of education and learning to transform societies and institutions toward a just, uh, peaceful, healthy, and sustainable world. This is very clear. This is almost obvious. Through our programs, we aim to assure that quality education is a synonymous with transformative education. This is happening against a backdrop of increasing complexity of increasing uncertainty and inequality. Transformative education then is essential to restore the bonds that characterize our shared humanity 
and our relationship with the natural world. This is race against uh, time in the face of climate change, for instance, and massive biodiversity loss uh, endangering our future, actually. In a survey conducted uh, last year, yes, by UNESCO uh, on the world in 2030, so now in 10 years, responders uh, ticked education as one of the top solutions to, 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 to solving the major crisis of our times, from climate change to uh, migration to increasing inequalities, as well as intolerance and, uh, and supporting democracy. The pandemic has uh, underscored more than ever uh, the need to consider education as a human right and the global common good. It has demonstrated the uh, replaceable value of schools, universities, teachers, and educators, not only for learning, this is a very crucial point in my opinion, but for social interaction and nurturing human relationships. Uh, I mean, more than ever, we realize that having schools open and giving children and students the opportunity to go there, to meet their uh, peers, uh, and, uh, and to, 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 to be part of a community is an important dimension uh, in learning as well, in learning uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, bringing together uh, a different kind of, uh, of mindset. And uh, um, the pandemic um, has underscored more than ever uh, how uh, and to what extent we, we have to consider education as a human right and as a global common good. It has demonstrated uh, also that uh, the crucial importance of the social emotional dimension of learning for coping with difficult, difficult circumstances, uh, developing empathy, a new kind of uh, empathy and providing mutual support. Global citizen, citizenship education, uh, which as you know, is the, the, the other side of the coin of 4.7 together with ESD is grounded in the, this uh, specific humanistic vision. It's not a kind of add-on on the curriculum, but it's a real uh, integrated approach uh, built on self-reflection, uh, dialogue, and uh, on the lifelong learning perspective. It's not uh, simply about uh, schooling uh, and the curriculum development, but really the kind of learning you can have uh, uh, lifelong. This is only possible if learners can process different options and, and perspectives. Be open to the diversity of cultural practices and expressions, and be empowered to take responsibility for their decisions and actions. And uh, this calls uh, for uh, an holistic uh, educational experience uh, that not only focuses on developing cognitive skills, which are of course very much important, but can take into account, can consider uh, social, emotional and behavioral learning to be equally essential. Uh, I think that, uh, let me put it simply like this, the more we leverage, leverage technology in this crisis, especially, and the more we understand the importance of the social, emotional, the human dimension of learning and teaching. Neuroscience on the other side tells us the importance of connecting uh, these three areas for learning to take hold and be transformative, but education systems have not yet fully integrated this vision and they were not yet prepared uh, to, such, to such a shock and to such uh, a strong shift of paradigm we need. This process has to involve teachers, has to involve principals, educators, families as well, and the entire community. And this brings me to education's multiplier effect uh, in all the areas of social well-being through a whole of society approach becoming a key to other rights and becoming a catalyst, so to say, for generating a new development model. Partnerships within and beyond education must be absolutely strengthened to move from what you call, especially in the UN, a silo uh, mentality to be collaborative uh, uh, and to reflect uh, the interconnection between the SDGs from climate action, uh, 
uh, and reducing inequalities to building strong institutions, just to mention some of the goals you have in mind for sure. In this context, uh, global citizenship is both a goal and a necessary condition for progress. You have to be given the tools, the space and the voice to become global citizens. And this is a bit our mission and this is a bit our common responsibility. Their participation is in itself a pedagogical practice. Uh, uh, trust in governing institution uh, is a, a, a historic loss, we know, particularly among the young people. The time is now to strengthen democratic institutions and the rule of law, placing youth at the center as co-creators, not simply participants uh, of uh, at the process, but co-creators, real agents of change as leaders. And uh, we have seen uh, such a model around. Let me mention something. We see something I have in my mind. We have seen uh, such a model in the justice dialogues our joint initiative with the UN Office on Drugs and Crime, focusing on the role of education in strengthening the rule of law, learning about effective advocacy for human rights and equitable societies begins at an early age through acquiring skills, values, and attitudes to make informed and ethical decisions. Critical thinking is also foundational uh, to digital citizenship, but we know to counter the tide of misinformation, which is, by the way, very much increasing now, especially through social networks, hate speech, conspiracy theories, uh, and the kind of, uh, how can I say, propaganda uh, fueled by social media as well. They carry the seeds of violence, we know. Last month, UNESCO launched uh, an updated media information literacy curriculum uh, uh, to strengthen global citizenship and build resilience uh, to such discourses and combat all forms of discrimination. Just to mention a very concrete tools, tool we have. Well, digital citizenship uh, has become a new democratic imperative as an educational one. Education has a responsibility today. Today we know a huge responsibility to give every learner the capacities to be responsible digital citizen, the capacity to think, think, think critically, to, to distinguish between, between the truth and fake news, uh, to identify a speech, uh, and, uh, uh, and a, a bit uh, to, to, to be able to, to react uh, uh, with a kind of autonomous uh, thinking and, uh, and uh, building. Uh, uh, an original mindset which can uh, be not so much influenced by, by this massive bombing of uh, uh, misinformation. Well, media and information literacy is, is now an integral dimension, dimension of education for global citizenship. And it calls for spaces for the, of dialogue in schools, for trained teachers, educators, to support students uh, in the, this journey of awareness and inquiry for more project-based pedagogical practices and for media partners to participate in the process. Uh, I can mention some uh, UN important initiatives running like uh, uh, the, um, the Global Conference and Forum on Addressing Hate Speech Through Education. We are organizing uh, uh, later this year in September, the end of September and, the, and October uh, together with the of Office of the Special Advisor on Prevention of the Genocide, uh, just to give an example. Well, transformative education, therefore, has to respond to new challenges and set new ethical frontiers based on human rights and dignity. And this is a bit the first point. And uh, I think I, I'm thinking of accelerating digital revolution uh, and uh, uh, the very last uh, important advances in artificial intelligence uh, left unrefined, uh, these technologies can, uh, of course, exacerbate gender and racial uh, biases, human rights abuses, uh, and confound the very definition of being human. And uh, this is a led uh, in, in UNESCO uh, to develop a recommendation on the ethics of artificial intelligence, which will become a milestone in, the, in terms of normative instrument. And uh, um, target 4.7 4 so brings a human rights and value 
uh, based approach uh, to the center of education and learning. And implementation of this uh, target calls for more awareness raising, uh, curriculum reform, uh, teacher support and training, and of course, last but not least, uh, financing more education, not less. UNESCO's competencies framework for global citizenship education is helping to shape national education strategies. Much of the, our work to bring uh, to life target 4.7 relates uh, to the 1974 recommendation. I'm sure you had in mind uh, as being a milestone uh, legal instrument uh, that brought together uh, many years ago for the first time, peace, international understanding, solidarity, human rights and fundamental freedoms into education. And now it's time to rethink a bit, to revisit a bit this uh, important uh, uh, international uh, uh, recommendation. And yet the monitoring shows that only uh, 15 uh, of countries reflect the recommendations principles in teacher training. Just to give you an example uh, in a very concrete way, assessment in many areas uh, is still lacking, uh, require renewed force to identify where we are succeeding and where we are not succeeding. The launch of Mission 4.7 last December marks another step forward in raising global attention around this target and speeding up country actions. And they are very much on the same page on that, I'm sure. And it brings together in a high level advisory group champions from beyond the world of education and takes a practical approach, connecting research, policy, action and evidence. This mission will create uh, and curate resources for teaching and learning and build an online repository of such materials from around the world. Um, and this mission will advocate as well for increased financing for education in the wake of disruption that has uh, already uh, put uh, education as a sector very much uh, uh, on the spot as well under threat. The transformations we need to shape a more uh, sustainable future are profound and systemic. And this led UNESCO to launch the Futures of Education Initiative uh, two years ago, before the onset of the pandemic. And this is my last point. The more we are uh, about uh, uh, you know, uh, addressing the current challenges, the most we have uh, to keep the ambition to go beyond current times, so to see how education systems will really be uh, in, 2020, uh, in 2050, just to say. So very much beyond the 2030 agenda as well. And uh, the Futures of Education Initiative, which is about being uh, uh, you know, released as a report uh, at the end of this year, will very much tell us uh, uh, on, on this uh, more foresight perspective we need. So, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a common responsibility, it's a fantastic, amazing uh, mission we have, and I really uh, thank you and look forward to the ideas and insights of the coming days. Thank you very much, over to you, and I'm very sorry in a few, few minutes I have to, 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 to jump in another important institutional meeting, so I can take one question if you allow me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And there was so rich uh, presentation of what you made and many of the points we definitely could tackle, tackle a lot on that. But I, I really, really like about your, your point on really that we need to really look for the futures as well, but definitely we need to really make it happen now as, as well. So, so we need to act now and not really forgetting about the future because they are really uh, goes hand in hand very, very, very heavily. I'm just looking that if there's any questions in the chat box now, uh, I can't really see it at, at the moment. Um, Or I'm um, just just a second. I'm just to look for if, if there's any of the questions because definitely it might be better that the other ones are asking than me the questions on, on there. Um, I think there is. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, yeah. So really, yeah. As I really have to go, I'm very okay. sorry for that. Apologies. Uh, I'm very happy to to keep in touch and to exchange uh, 
uh, yeah, uh, just keeping also the, the the outcomes of your discussion and insights. Very In, indeed, and and if we really. can do that, we can we can pass the questions for you by email yes. as well. Thank you, In, absolutely. Not, on that. So thanks a lot for joining us and definitely we will com continue the great collaboration. Thanks a lot. For thank you. Thank you very much. We'll have a great touch. discussion today. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for that. But perhaps we are not leaving because we have a couple of more minutes here to, to go on on that. I think it was really, really rich speech and a lot of nuances, which definitely we need to digest a bit as, as well as a Bridge 47 and the whole community. And um, like I said, it would be really great if any of you would like to pass any questions to, to Madame Giannini. We are happy to collect those questions and, and make sure that we will get the answers as well. And I just see Lydia there. I'm, I'm sure that you can help us to make sure that we will, we will get the answers and all that. Because I think that there's so much going on at the moment that perhaps the point also keeping in mind about the the questions and, and the discussions in the panel before the keynote speak uh, speech session, I, I think that the we need to exactly inform, we need to do a little, a little bit more even the communication amongst us, because there's so much going on at the moment. And I'm really trying to find out tactically as, as well that how could we really exactly use the opportunities what we have in because there are so many opportunities in in the air uh, and I, I think that it's not against on any of the activities what we need to do because we need to definitely continue and like many of the colleagues in the panel say that we need to really continue the capacity development all the time we need to really uh, continue the networking finding the synergies but definitely we need to do the advocacy as well because we need to challenge the structures what what exist uh, especially about this some kind of uh, fragile world where we are living at the moment, uh, not collapsing the current structures, but really developing those so that they could be even more better for making this transformation happening. But also we need to work out of the structures and, and those are the two sides of the same coin. And that's why I, I think that it's, it's plenty of opportunities. And now the question is that how could we coordinate and how uh, could, could we really find the best ways how to really make the, the change happening. But I'm not really sure that we can, we can easily do that. So I, I really, really have the very strong feeling on that. And perhaps the last point uh, as a reflection for, for uh, Madame Giannini's uh, points, I, I think it's, it's really important that perhaps now the role of the education and the learning, the people are much more aware about those at the moment, that that's really is really the great opportunity. And, and when it really comes back to related to the human rights and the values, I, I think that it's, it's really, really, really urgent. urgent. Urgency at the moment, but really the great opportunity. So I, I think that this is really, really now, it, it really just depends on us how we use this this opportunity and and that's that's perhaps my my point to encourage all of us to think about a little bit out of the boxes as well uh, we are heavily definitely we would like to get the strategies in the political frames or not there but it might be that we need to do other exercises in parallel and perhaps this is my invitation for all of us to really think about at the same time traditionally but same time a little bit differently huge challenge but I, I I'm, I'm really sure that we are ready to to take this this challenge uh, for for all of us okay I'm not really happy to conclude from my side here um, just just a point to see that we also see a little bit on the graphic harvester here so that's great reminder for us when we are reflecting and, and as a part of the learning process when all of us hopefully, take the time and really reflect also the points that has been uh, collected here in, in the summary. So thanks a lot for, for that. But perhaps letting you go out, I think, Ricardo, you are going to guide us for the next action point. So over to you, Ricardo. Thank you so much, Rili. Um, it was a wonderful keynote speech. And uh, yes, we are having a one and a half hours lunch break now 
Uh, afterwards, we are going to continue with the question of how to engage our audiences. And in this session, uh, we will be presented with inno innovative methods for engaging citizens to the sustainable de development goals. And yeah, it will be a space to refer, uh, share reflections and accesses, successes in many projects and learning out outcomes from projects around the world. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, we are not having the possibility to yeah sit down in person to have a drink and have uh, lunch together. But nevertheless, uh, we still would like to provide you the opportunity to meet each other, to network. And uh, that's why we have created some breakout rooms for you. So these uh, next one and a half hours can very well be used. So um, if you want to use this time to meet some colleagues, um, you can join one of the rooms we have created for you. Uh, we were very creative in naming these rooms. Um, so one of them is called Global Citizenship Education in Modern Times. Then we are having a very straightforward one called What am I having for lunch today? Because it's always nice to speak about food. Um, we are uh, wondering what life after COVID-19 will look like if you want to talk about this. And of course, uh, we want to look into the future and if you want to browse with your colleagues ideas about future projects, initiatives and corporations, this might be one breakout room uh, you want to join with colleagues. But of course, um, if you want to meet a specific colleague in a room you want to name completely different, please come forward. Um, we are happy to create a special space for you. You can name it however you want. And um, yeah, we have one, one and a half hours. Um, in the meantime, here in this main room, you will be hearing some music. And yeah, please unmute yourself at any time when you uh, want to either join one of these rooms in case you're not able to join these rooms yourself, we can move you there. Or if you want to be paired together. So this is our networking space in the next one and a half hours, when we meet again for the session, framing on how to engage your audience. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful lunch break and see you later or enjoy the networking.